eight undefeated teams remain in college football, and uh, one of them has not been undefeated entering November since 1967, and that's Indiana football, fresh off a W in, uh, in front of the college game, game day crew uh, over Washington, getting set to take on Michigan State before they take on my alma mater, Michigan. Kurt Signetti, the head coach of Indiana football, is here. How you doing, coach? I'm good. You? What a pleasure to meet you. I am a fan from afar, sir. Well, I appreciate that. It's always good to have fans. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes, business. You can be a hero this week, but everything next week's going to be based on the result on Saturday. I, I that is spoken like a true coach right there. You know, I, I remember whenever I used to cover, uh, you know, any baseball game that Tony Larusa did, I would see him before the game say, "How you doing?" He'd say, "Ask me in nine innings." That's what he would say. You know, like <laughs> that's and so that's what you sound like right now. Uh, what would you, how would you term your philosophy, coach? What would you say that? I'm 42 year vet and uh, 14th year as head coach, been around a lot of great people. Dad was a coach, college football hall of fame. Uh, you know, was with Nick on the ground floor for four years at Alabama. So, I mean, we're process driven, you know, it's all about coming into a new program, change the way people think inside and outside the organization, high standards, expectations accountability um but it's all about people getting the right people on the bus and improving daily and never compromising your standards and uh you know we're we're pretty efficient time management i'm pretty direct in sending the message a uh, few words but l make sure it resonates and i'm a little bit old school yeah a little bit old school um i i, I kind of pick up on that so what is the through line would you say in terms of the players you're you're looking for what would you say that uh, you look for somebody and you go, that, that's, that's a guy who can play for me, coach? Well, you got to have X amount of ability, uh, you know, to play at this level. Uh, but production over, uh, over potential. I mean, they, they've got to be good team guys, good character, uh, you know, be able to handle the ups and downs, the grind. Uh, it takes a certain kind of guy to be able to do that. Uh, you know, uh, transfer portal is a real thing nowadays in college football, like NFL free agency. So, uh, you know, I really think most of the time, uh, what percent, I don't know. Uh, the first two, three minutes you meet somebody face to face, you form an idea. It's not always correct, but you have a pretty good idea. And, and you've done your research on a guy. So, I mean, uh, you know, we need uh, multiple guys that can kind of fit into the team concept. Everybody wants catches and numbers, but at the end of the day, when a team's successful, uh, everybody benefits, all conference, all America, and NFL draft choices, things like that. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a certain kind of guy. Now, I understand I'm asking an old school football coach this question, but how was it to have college game day there, to be chosen by that program, or program, as McAfee would call it, to, to come to your spot? Yeah, well, coach. you know, we had it last year at JMU, so I made my notes because we did. We were undefeated and lost, so um, I thought the players did a good job of keeping the main thing the main thing. It was a tremendous, uh, tremendous thing for the university, the town, the state, uh, and uh, a lot of people. It was wild, crazy. I had a little more time up on the main stage this year than last year, so uh, yeah, and. Uh, it was great. I mean, uh, you know, we had a big noon kickoff the week before. And uh, so, you know, we're getting a lot of attention out there. But like we just talked about, you know, it's all contingent on. But it was excellent. Yeah. And, and you know, again, you're an old school guy. And I know you're just new to Indiana. But have to have Corso there, right? To have Lee Corso there, Coach Corso from Indiana University for many of his years, to have him there. That, that a predecessor of yours, that had to be pretty cool, I imagine. Oh. Coach. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I've gotten to know him a little bit the last few years, but, uh, you know, he a very popular guy. He had a, a really good uh, team here, uh, went to the bowl one, and, uh, you know, people here love him. And, uh, you know, we, we shared a common bond, too. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, senior in high school, I was the oldest. My dad was head football coach at West Virginia, came down with cancer, given his last rights twice. And uh, during that process, we got a letter from Lee Corso, um, and knew the name but didn't know him 
And, you know, he had uh, in the letter uh, a cross that w- had, uh, according to him, you know, special healing powers. And that sat on top of my dad's dresser uh, during the whole process. And as a family, hmm. you know, uh, we always really appreciated that from him. I had no, I had no idea wow. about that. That he, That's pretty cool, man. Did you did you mention it to him when you saw him? Um, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Special. In fact, was asked the question on the game they set. So. Small world, you know, things circle back in funny ways. They certainly do. Kurt Signetti, the head coach of undefeated Indiana here on the Rich Eisen Show. Now, um, Coach, obviously your your Google Me statement um, certainly um, echoed around quite a bit in our world. And so we did, in fact, Google you uh, <laughs> in advance of this conversation. Mm. And on this program, we have a segment called Celebrity True or False that we normally have with uh, our actors, actresses that come on this program. You are the first person that I would prefer to do this with from the sports world to find out if what we have Googled is in fact true or false, if you don't mind, Coach. Indulge me for this moment. Okay, here we go. And we have production value. And, and, and again, you're an evaluator. Please feel free to evaluate our production value. Hit it, please, for Coach. Celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. What do you think, Coach, of our production value there? Be honest. In, in terms of me? Yeah, no, just in terms of what what you think. Just in terms of the the television uh, up, you know, the the sort of uh, introduction that we just gave you, right there. I oh, I love that. True. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, first one up. True or false? You were on the quarterback depth chart at West Virginia behind Oliver Luck. Is that true? True. Huh. Um, and did you meet Andrew at any point in time? Or this was obviously before uh, Oliver had Andrew, I imagine. Yeah, never met Andrew. Okay. But um, was what was it like being uh, on the depth chart with Oliver Luck back in the day at West Virginia? Oh, I'm, you know, I mean, Oliver Luck, uh, you know, he was a great player, but, you know, he was a finalist for Rhodes Scholarship. You know, they chose like five, I think, and he was number six. And just a mega talented guy that had supreme respect for all of his teammates. And, uh, you know, he was like, uh, in my mind, you know, he was like an idol. You know what I mean? <laughs> he had it all together and he was so smart. And he was tough, tough guy, man. I mean, he hurt his ankle uh, senior year, they had a uh, trainer said be out three, four weeks. He was, he was in that training room 24 seven, played that next week against Virginia Tech, could barely walk. I mean, he was a tough competitor. What sort of quarterback were you? A bad quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you evaluate yourself back, back in the day? Yeah, I'm a tough evaluator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one up. True or false, Coach Signetti. Uh, you coached Phillip Rivers and recruited Russell Wilson at NC State. Is that true? Mainly true. Okay. What's Why is that mainly I true? Phillip Rivers his senior year, uh-huh. and uh, but was with him all four years. We mm-hmm. were new staff, and he was a January enrollee, and he was just a terrific guy to be around. I mean, just loved to compete and was always up. And uh, – and I was pretty heavily involved in uh, Russell Wilson's recruiting. Yes, I, I do get credit for that, but it was a joint effort. And uh, and I never uh, I left uh, before he enrolled. That's when I went with uh, Coach Saban to Alabama. Right. So, uh, what did you see? Do you you could tell Philip Rivers was it essentially back then, Coach? You could tell. Uh, you could tell the very first spring practice once you were out there on the field. I mean, he was just distributing the ball. I mean, he, he would process it so fast once the ball was snapped. He saw it before the coaches did. And, you know, people would talk about his release, but, you know, it was accurate. And, um, I mean, he was so competitive, man. He'd get in fights with linebackers. And, I mean, he was like a built like a tight end. And, uh, you know, it just he never had a bad day. I mean, <laughs> a great one, all-time great one. He got in a fight with linebackers, Phillip Rivers, back in the day? In practice, oh yeah. Well, you know, Chuck Chuck Amato was a head coach, and he's a pretty fiery guy, D line guy. Came from uh, Florida State back when they really had it rolling. Was with Coach Bowden, and uh, you know, practices were they were pretty competitive, and something happened. You know, him and Pat Thomas, who played for the Jags, they got into it a little bit. Okay, and so, and I can't remember all the details. <laughs> what did you see in Russ though 
coach because he, it, it, I mean, you could say overlooked his entire career, even now, when now that he's 2 and 0 in his first couple starts for the Steelers. What, what did you see in Russ back in the day? Really a sharp guy. His grandfather was like the uh, pre- president of Norfolk State and really alert and smart. Uh, wasn't the biggest guy in the world, but could really spin the ball. And we were looking for a quarterback. And I'll tell you who actually turned us on him was my brother, he, who was the offense coordinator at the time at UNC. Mm-hmm. And he tried to make a, a pitch uh, for for Russell, but they had already taken their quarterback, uh, uh, New York, whose brother was a basketball player at Duke. Can't remember his name now. And so uh, couldn't take another. And then he came to our camp and, and really impressed us. And, uh, you know, he, he really liked NC State quite a bit. And uh, – well, I mean, what he's done in his career is remarkable. I mean, last night I got the, I think last night was first NFL game I've watched this year. I actually got to see that new kickoff rule, man. It's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that guy, he tore it up last night. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so, so, oh, so you just you peeked in on to see what Russ was, uh, was looking like? Last well, night? yeah. It was Monday Night Football. I wanted to see if Aikman was going to give us any play on TV. Yeah, he did, though. He did. Because Joe <laughs> Buck did. is Mr. Indiana, right? You know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's <laughs> world famous. Half as famous as his dad. <laughs> well, I guess you could say the same thing, right? Um, so, uh, next up, a couple more left for you. Kurt Signetti. True or false, as wide receivers coach at Alabama, you coached Julio Jones and also as a recruiting coordinator there, helped recruit Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram to Alabama. True. And Dante Hightower. Okay. Let's not forget him. Um, That's right. Let's not forget him. So uh, Julio, um, Hall of Fame talent right from the get-go as well? That You saw that? Him and Rivers right there and almost – down the checklist. N- never had a bad day. Great to coach. Couldn't wait to get in the meeting room with them. Would brighten up your day. Competed like a warrior every day at practice. Especially, I'll tell you what, you bring a, a big time recruit. Now they're called five star recruits. You know, back then they weren't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was going to put a show on for that guy at practice. And uh, always has a smile on his face. Always. I mean, one of the most genuine people I've ever met in my life. Special guy. What did you pick up from Saban? And again, that had to be a neat moment for you, Corso on one side, Saban on another side, as uh, college game days in Bloomington uh, for you. Uh, what did you pick up from Saban, Coach? Well, quite a bit. I, I had been an assistant for 24 years, I think, prior mm-hmm. at, at schools that are mainly considered P4 nowadays. Um, but I learned how to win from him. And after one year with him, like I had learned more than you know the previous – on how to run an organization, lead people, manage, practice, game strategy, recruiting, you know, structure an organization. Um, but at the end of the day, I learned how to win from Nick. What do you mean you learned how to win? What 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 uh, what form does that take? I don't know. Well, you know, it's a process. And um, some of the things I talked about earlier, mm-hmm. you know, it, it starts with uh, getting the right people on the bus wrong people off and then having high standards and expectations and everything you do and accountability and not being afraid to confront people, you know, when they're not living up to the standard and never lowering your standards and, um, and having a blueprint and a plan of working it daily and, and improving. And if you're not striving, you you know, really you're getting worse because in this business, the margin for error is very slim. So you're getting better and getting worse. Um, but well, messaging, how to manage a staff, how to lead a staff, how to practice recruiting philosophy, how to structure a day, month, year. Mm. I mean, he was the most organized guy. How, but you know what? Like, we won 29 regular season games in a row. We took over our first year. We were seven and six, lost to Louisiana Monroe, 11th game of the year, and then won 29 regular season games in a row. And, you know, the the big thing from him for was avoiding complacency because, you know, when you win, you have that – that good feeling and you're supposed to enjoy it for 24 hours, but then you got to regain that edge, you know, uh, on Monday as a player, Sunday as a staff member. And, you know, back then you, you didn't really understand kind of the method, uh, so to speak all the time. (laughs) Now as a head coach, you do. So you've been on the business end 
Is that what you're saying from Nick Saban? Once a time? Well, I said, I said on, I even said on game day, I said, because they were talking about me being a maniac in the fourth quarter against Nebraska. We're up about 42 points. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, yeah, well, you know, I, as an assistant, I used to wonder why I was getting my ass ripped in the fourth quarter when we were ahead of Alabama. Now I understand. <laughs> you know what? Because when you have a standard and your standards are not dictated by the circumstances of the game, hmm. okay, then, uh, you know, you got to keep your standards high. And it's easy, you know, human nature is to relax and be happy when you're up like that or going to win. But, you know, uh, consistency and performance, which is the key to the drill if you want to be a champion. And and really great competitors are never satisfied, ever, ever, ever. Uh, you know, you got to keep the standards high. And it's my job <laughs> to send the message hmm. when I detect things aren't quite where they need to be, regardless of the score, the competitive circumstances of the game. I mean, when you're process-driven, you're playing one play at a time, six seconds a player, every play's got a life in a history of its own, fast, physical, relentless, smart, disciplined, poised, not affected by success or failure – on the next play you buy into playing that way then you're going to play your best in those tight games at the end you know you're not looking at the scoreboard the other guy is you're going to win those close games but you're also going to become the best you can be and and when you're preparing the right way and and you have bought into that and you're committed and disciplined there's really no self-imposed limitations on what you can accomplish and you're an expert identifier of rat poison i imagine after your time. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're calling those the warm fuzzies now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very 21st century updating. I appreciate that. Uh, last one for you. Uh, this is a simple one. Uh, true, or false, true or false, Coach Signetti, uh, it's pretty simple. You win. Is that true or false? That's true. Okay, very good. Can <laughs> confirm it. Very good. <laughs> Coach Kurt Signetti, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Good luck against Michigan State. Um, then you get my alma mater the, the next week, Ohio State and Purdue. Those are your last four. Good luck uh, going through that part of your schedule. And I really appreciate uh, you joining. It's been uh, a pleasure watching your team play and then uh, now getting to, to meet you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was great being on and have a great day. Right back at you. That's Coach Kurt Signetti of the undefeated Indiana Hoosiers right here on the Rich wow. Eisen Show. I think that was a very successful <laughs> first was. ever sports Great. edition of yes. Celebrity True or False. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.